Now, so here's some propositions. We can all teach maths better. The best teacher in the room. Put your hand up if you're the best teacher in the room. Um, the best teacher in the room can get better. We can all get better. That's, that's, that's a proposition. The pathway to improvement is teaching teams working collaboratively on planning, teaching and assessment. That's, so that's, in a sense, we're, the idea is we're going to do this together. Now, the, it's also true that each lesson sequence should ideally incorporate a variety of things. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And we're actually sort of going to focus on a particular type of lesson um, that just to focus our work. Um, they should have intended learning goals now. I know see over there that um, learning intentions are six criteria and learning reflection over there that um, I'm not sure what they do in here. Presumably they have phys ed or something. So presumably the phys ed teacher writes these things up um, before, the, before the lesson. What do they do in here? Oh, anything. Oh, really? Okay. Um, now, here's, a, here's an important point. I'm actually going to stand over here so I can watch the students' faces when I say this. Uh, um, I actually see the development of fluency is not only critical to learning maths, but it's actually something that the students need to take responsibility for at home. But they need to make time at home with the music off, <coughs> the TV off, with the door shut, and just learn whatever it is, the seven times table, or you know, the squares up to 12 squared, or whatever it happens to be that they need to learn, that they just spend time learning it. If we haven't got time in school to be doing the fluency stuff that should have been developed already. It's something that kids need to do. Now, you need to have a way of communicating that to the kids, that they need to learn um, what it is that... Because, as you'll see from, from the day, I hope we're going to do things that you'll say, yeah, that wouldn't do any harm for kids to learn that, but it's sort of going to imply that they can multiply five times three, and not only that, maybe they can even multiply 20 times 40. That, that they need to be able to do these things sort of without thinking about it. And, uh, I use the word fluently, but it's, they need to do it away. I can see signal I think, but I don't look at these TV ones. It's wobbles. Um, now, here's the... Um, I actually watch the students again when I say this. Students should be doing stuff in class that they don't know how to do. Now, my sense is that we sort of plan our maths teaching so that the students do know how to do it. But my point, if they do know how to do it already, why are we doing it? And if we just told them what to do and they're going to do what we tell them, they're not learning anything either. They need to work on stuff they don't know how to do. Because that's what learning is. You, you take something you don't know how to do and you work on it. And, and it's actually a really fundamental thing to what, what we're going to say. So don't get to the end... Oh, sorry, I, I won't get angry, but don't get to the end of the day and say, but my kids won't know how to do that. Not, I don't care. But, you know, in a sense, that's the point. That we want them to not know how to do it at the start and to know how to do it at the end. But here's the, re here's the idea, that students are more likely to connect ideas. Math mathematics, by the way, is about connecting ideas. It's not about learning one idea, then learning a different idea, then learning a different idea, then learning a different idea, and hope somehow that kids connect them together. <coughs> learning maths is about connecting the ideas. And so, and they're more likely to connect the ideas if they compare and connect related ideas for themselves and build net works of concepts for themselves. Not, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to, I, what we're going to talk about is how can we get them to build those networks for themselves. That's what, that's what mathematics learning is going to be. And it's the connections that are key to remembering and transferring knowledge. And, and one of the things that's almost a theme of the day is that asking students to solve and represent problems in more than one way helps to build connections. Now, one of the things I know that maths teachers, we're sort of trained to do things one way, preferably our way. Um, we're sort of trained to do that. 
So I'm going to ask you a number of times during the day to do things a different way. I mean, do them your way, but also do them a different way again. And because that's what helps build connections. There are risks in teaching maths as a series of micro skills. And if I can just explain what I mean, I'm doing a project that's similar to the, the type of lessons, you know, slightly higher level than this. And one of the schools we're working with is a, a select entry school, an elite select entry school. And those kids have worked through um, three chapters on uh, equations and then linear functions um, and, and graphing, connecting the whole thing together, coordinate geometry and work. And they've done really complicated stuff on that. And then we ask them, draw the, what are the equations of five lines that go through the point negative three, two? And these kids couldn't do it. Whereas the question to me is very straightforward if you have the slightest idea about uh, linear functions. So what it means, they haven't learned anything. They've learned page 32, and then they went on and learned page 33, and then we went on page 34, and there's no connection. So they've got no usable knowledge at the end of these three chapters, which are really quite complex in terms of their structure. And so what it is, is they've been taught as a series of micro-skills. And, and here's, the, here's the rub. The goal is that students come to know that they can learn mathematics. Now, they don't know that they can learn mathematics if what you give them they already know already. Because then, if they know it already at the start of the lesson, <coughs> then they won't learn anything that lesson. What they have to do is they have to be in a where they don't know it at the start of the lesson. And do know at the end of the lesson, that's what learning is. And so unless we can do that, we're not going to... So even though... I'm saying that this is only one type of, what the lesson structure we're going to talk about is one type of learning. What I'm really saying is that the, the idea, these ideas apply to every lesson. That you've got to be giving kids stuff they don't know how to do. Okay. And, and so here, you're probably thinking about, that'll be no problem, but I still need to start at the easy end. And what I'm saying is students benefit when they move from not knowing to knowing. In other words, what they've learned is explicit. And it doesn't happen if they're working on the known. So if you say, we're going to start from the known, and then we're going to move slightly forward and move slightly forward again, they don't, they don't get that sense of feeling they've learned. The issue is this. When confronted with a task they can't do, students need to explore their mental structures and schemes, the links, the connections, and what's unknown for themselves. That is, they have to look into it. Oh, hello, I don't know how to do this. I wonder what I know that might help. And draw that out of that so that that knowledge is ready for when we actually get a chance to talk about the <coughs> idea. 